Good morning. Pleasure to have you join us for another episode of Off the Press. We get to bring you all the latest headline and make it easier for you to go pick up whichever paper catches your fancy. My name is Felicity Ezeweke and I have with me two guests this morning. I have a public affairs analyst, Akintelu Ajidon. Yes. Thank you very much nice for coming. Here, yeah. you for and of course, me. we have policy analyst, Ifi Oji. Pleasure to have you join us Hi, again. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we have some papers. We'll start things off with uh, this day newspaper. Let's see how that goes. Um, the big one here is court consent to extradition of PNID's beneficial owner to Nigeria. We also have other suspects arrest to face fraud, other charges. FG releases 1.2 trillion naira capex puts revenue performance at 4.2 trillion naira. Amechi others present scorecards to Federal Executive Council. The meeting held yesterday, Wednesday. We also have at the very top of the paper, the Supreme Court affirming elections of Abiodu El Rufai, Emmanuel Makaide, Masari, um, Songo Lusule, many others. That's uh, on page six, you'll find details of the paper. Rates crash further as banks race to beat 65% LDR deadline. Uh, she's here. She'll help us make sense of that. And um, just before we uh, hand over to our guest, we have Lawan Heads Peace Committee as APC moves to reconcile members. You find details on page six of the paper. A quick look at the back shows uh, Adeni talking about the debt we owe Nigeria. Mm. What can that debt be? Let's come. Let's start with the policy analysis this morning and take a look at this. Um, Money matter. Okay, so I don't know. Several weeks ago, the CBN put out a, a more or less like a, a public uh, statement calling all banks to ensure that they had a 65% loan to deposit ratio. And in a bid to basically ensure that more loans are given out, they have uh, most of these banks have found ways to uh, lower the deposit rates, uh, interest rates to 3% from. 4%, so they're crashing the, the um, loan deposit rates as well. And I think, uh, and also in a bid to do that as well, they are trying to take up, um, have uh, SMEs take out more loans, and so they're also trying to bring down the uh, interest rates to uh, single digits, so that at the end of the day, uh, most of these uh, banks are in compliance with the CBN regulations. Mm, and okay. so that's what is going on there. Yeah, I needed to um, help us make sense of that. Which of this headline would you want to pick on? I guess you'll be looking at the screamer. <laughs> Not necessarily. Actually, I think the, the Lawan case, for example, him heading the Peace Committee for the APC, APC yeah. is actually very essential because, you know, a house that's divided can't really stand. And APC is a, is a major um, political party in the, country, in the nation. And so, in order for like things to be, um, in order for things to be at one, there has to be some the, sort of peace. Uh, in, yeah. And it's also understandable because, like you know, there's this struggle for power. Uh, but I mean, it was also like commendable for even the president himself to like speak on. Well, do you actually see um, these warring parties, warring factions, so to speak, coming together to actually uh, unite, especially ahead of the elections coming up soon? They have to. It's not a matter of choice anymore. It's a matter of necessity now. You know, the, before, um, because to move the nation forward, we can't be split because everyone would be looking out for their different interests. Interest, you get yeah. what I'm trying to say? But like, that, that, that shouldn't be the case. Maybe we need to come together as one house and then, you know, put the, tape, them, the things that need to be done on the ground and then move forward move rather forward. than looking out for personal interests. All right. Um, is there any other headline you would want to take on before we move on to the next paper? of this day. Um, um, I think we can address some of the other issues in the other papers, but just to uh, address what uh, he has said, I, I mean, I'll just take a leaf of the, um, of the page of the Americans at the moment who are going through heavy, oh. heavy... Um, I watched a bit of it, it last night. Uh, it was, night. Quite, uh, it was quite topical, to say the least. And uh, so Donald Trump, who is the current uh, president of the United States, is going to be the third, uh, well, it's going to be the third or yes, fourth um, impeached uh, president uh, from, the, um, from the, the, the House on the, from yeah. the, yeah. the House, of House of Representatives. Thank you very much. And um, it's just, it just shows you that even though 
um, he's actually been impeached formally. Uh, in in in, in, in fact, in de facto, he's been d d impeached. But in real terms, there's still a possibility that once um, that same those same charges go to the, the uh, Senate. Senate, that he will not uh, be impeached mm -hmm. because there is a majority. There. Uh, yeah, there's a major majority of the, rep um, the Republican Party, which which is the party that he represents. So I think that just to add to what you're saying, I think it's even even in instances where there is a, a complete uh, disparity in terms of your uh, ideology and your viewpoint, it's always important to make sure that you as a party, the party, party stays strong at all points. All right, let's see uh, the Vanguard. Again, uh, PNID is back here, so you have to speak on it. Um, uh, $9.6 billion PNID award, court orders arrest of Britain. EFCC gets bench warrant to begin extradition proceedings. Uh, let me just start with that. Do, yes. you see, do you see them being able to get that Britain to come to Nigeria and face trial? Mm, highly unlikely, because we already know the... the Based on past events of, like, of people who have London money and then gone abroad and they've been unable to bring them back, so it's very unlikely. But let's see how things sequences play down. unfold. Yeah. This PNID case is a case that even Sidney Sheldon couldn't have written better himself. <laughs> I think it's it spanned. It is almost epic in proportions. It spanned three continents. It's uh, they've had two um, passing aways or, or two deaths. Mm. They've had so many different uh, different courts and different uh, venues. Uh, you know, throughout the uh, span of this uh, saga. And I think this is just adding to the, another chapter to this uh, already very well-read book. Um, I, Adam Quinn is the person in question. So what they have said is that they, 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 the, the court has issued a bench warrant for uh, his arrest. And actually, the courts abroad have uh, acceded. They have agreed. And I, 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 because of the nature of this case and because of the epic proportion of this case, there's going to be a, a, micro, a microscope and really close lens at the proceedings because 9.6 billion is not anything yeah. to snuff at. So True. this is something I do. I, well, well, I agree well, that well, it's difficult. Well, some people say Nigerians have moved on, really. We're waiting for whatever comes I, out. Well, you may have moved on, but I mean, just looking at how the case even um, was even um, brought to the fore, it shows you that moving on is not an option. It's not for an us. option. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, church burned. That's a picture on the front page of the Vanguard. Um, it's showing a miracle center in Akure Ondo State set ablaze by Irish youths over a missing boy in Ondo. I saw that story and then I saw whether there, were, it, there was actually no boy buried at the altar. Uh, but apparently the youths thought uh, that was the case. But you can read details of that story um, inside the paper. OG Carlos Slock appeals against takeover by FG. We also have golf polls. Makainde, um, that story was um, the affirmation of the election by the Supreme Court, is captured uh, here as well. Uh, other headlines, projects without sites, dot budget 2020. <laughs> <laughs> um, FG releases 1.2 trillion Arab for capital projects. <laughs> Equity community protests headsman invasion. And the sad news from last night, Wajimogu slums dies as APC senators mourn. He was just 51 years old. Um, quite a sad development. If you go to the top of the paper, you'll see other stories there. Uh, CBN threatens to suspend bank accounts of palm oil smugglers. We also have missing boy in Odo. Policemen, two others killed as youths set church ablaze in Akure. And that's the picture uh, on the front page. You will see the details on page six of the paper. Let me just give you a glimpse of what the Vanguard looks like this morning. That is what it is uh, for you. Uh, you can see um, all of it there. All right, uh, let's see what's on the back page. Uh, usual sports stories are here. Let's get Ify here. I, I need you to speak on this uh, situation of projects without sites dotting the budget 2020. I had a chance to uh, read the appropriation bill. This is what is basically uh, the appropriation bill was put forward for moved uh, on the um, floor of the National Assembly. And uh, yes, I was a bit surprised that the one point, almost four, uh, by three trillion uh, naira is, which was even, I think, even a bit, I think 30% more than was originally intended 
from the uh, Ministry of uh, Budget and, and Planning. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it obviously didn't smell correct. It didn't, it's something smelled a bit fishy, if for lack of a better word. Uh, the fact that there was a 30% a, a markup on the original intention of that uh, budget. So I feel that um, even though it was passed in record time, which is obviously commendable, there's, there's also um, merit in actually going through it with a fine tooth comb. I'm not trying to cast aspersions on anybody, but I think that it's always important to make uh, every cobble count. count. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think that, uh, especially with recurrent expenditure, this is something that you know, but by its very nature, it's recurrent. You know what the, each, each year, what that budget is going to be on. Closer scrutiny to the recurrent expenditure may help us in the future. And in terms of them deciding that, oh, they're going, going to raise 40, four points, three trillion naira in terms of revenue. I would love to see how they came up with that figure. I understand that people are saying that, oh, uh, um, uh, um, GDP's capital ratio is small, but ultimately we have to, be, we have, to have uh, monies that are spent that are recoverable. And that is where I think we are lacking at the moment. Uh, do you want to speak on any of these headlines? Just a, an extra comment on that before I okay. move to the church topic. I actually agree with her very well in the sense that to even begin with, how can like you claim to be doing something when you have no, there is no structure, there is nothing? Because they say project without site dot budget twenty twenty, and it's it's almost fascinating that this is even the case, really, because it's like they ask. It's it's almost a case of like how the country has always been in the sense that it is continuous that they just keep on taking money and claiming to be doing work, but there's actually no work. We see. Oh yeah, and they keep taking money yearly, yearly, yearly. So as she said, there needs to be proper super supervision on, on actual projects to make sure that they're actually, they actually have sites and that things are actually being done. Because how can you claim that there's a G, how, like how is the GDP going to move forward if there is no work being done? I mean, just to break it down for just for that, just a proper analysis of what the um, the budget actually talks about. It, it, there's the provision made for uh, new schools. We have so many schools in Nigeria that are lacking, that are needing that structure. That they have, the structure is already in place. Those schools exist. We need to put money into schools that exist, that have curriculum that have actually been uh, vetted, and that are already up and running. Why start a project that you probably will not be able to finish? Instead of so, if, is that a, is that a different way of trying to get money to other for other projects? That may be the case. I mean, last time we also spoke about how um, the one in three and thirty percent uh, unemployment rate in Nigeria, and how we need to create a free market. I would I would go as far as to say that, it, in terms of having a plan to have that money, the revenue recoverable and a revenue plan, we should focus more on actually creating a free market for MSMEs so that we open up our market, make, make sure that most of our, our young, our youths are employed because 65%, it's not a small amount, 65% of our workforce is generated from uh, SM, MS, micro and small and medium enterprises. So okay. that is what we need to focus on, I would say. Uh, good thoughts there, but uh, I'm interested in hearing your thinking on the fire situation in Akure. To, be, to, to start with, it's a very unfortunate situation and I feel this case was largely due to the general contempt and unrest in this in the region because for to be even begin with why would the people go as far to do such things if they weren't already you know the state of the city, of the state of the country mm -hmm. and other the other no, this is a young child other lower about. factors and yeah. the fact that the, the the family actually reported um reported the pastor to the police. And due to that, they arrested him. But then the fact that the people just went so far. It, OK, without evidence, you it mean? Was like pretty, pretty much, basically just, um, this is a perfect case of jungle on justice, which, is, which goes against civility. Yeah. And it shouldn't be the case, because there is a process for these things. And because of, you, in a way, it can be argued that you can't blame them because Nigerians aren't used to a system being in place and mm -hmm. actual people getting justice for events, so they tend to take justice into their own hands. Yes. But this goes too far, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't have gone this case because a policeman was killed, and two people were killed, and a lot of other people were injured in this situation, and that's actually a very terrible thing. And also, the, there was a television network that falsely, apparently falsely claimed that the boy's body 
was found in the... Yes, I actually saw but, a story that, uh, that you know, negated, negates that, rather, yeah, said that no child was found, found at exactly. the altar. Like, the policeman was able to, like, properly um, explain. speak on, yeah, explain the situation that this was actually not the case, that that was just a situation of false information. And that also plays a part because it, this is a media age where it's so easy to give it's false information, information and yeah. create mass hysteria due to just a little false information. And, and mm. these things need to be checked perfectly well. The people need to have more trust in, this, yeah, in the system. system, and the system itself needs to work so that people can have more trust. It's both ways, really. All right, let's move on to the Punch newspaper. We have very limited time now. Um, IPPIS, Ambassadors face fresh strike in January. FG enrolls 8,000 lecturers. That's on the front page. Universities workers enrollment hits 90,000. And we also have National Assembly keeps ASU waiting. Uh, that same story, missing child, is captured here again mm -hmm. on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And just minute, it, you'll see some other uh, headlines. Lagos CP others probe into U.S. returnees murder. I read a bit of that story. 40, he, the man lived 45 years uh, in the U.S. and just came home, and then he was murdered um, in Ikorodu. Uh, let's hope that there will be some conclusion uh, to that case mm -hmm. as well. Equity community alleges headers destroy a uh, 50 million naira farm hoist flag. That's uh, another one for you. Lawan others mourn as emo senator slumps and dies. Uh, that's a Wajimogu. That story was also captured earlier on this day mm -hmm. newspaper. Uh, we'll take a quick look at what's at the top of the paper now. Um, you see banks earned 135.15 billion naira from e-payments in nine months. We also have reps probe PPPRA over unremitted 1.3 trillion naira revenue. Slow democracy, Buhari encouraging impunity, say MBA, San, and then Gov's meet on FG's bailout repayment deductions. And on the back, of course, we have on gay Jesus and offended Nigerians. Definitely a read for you if you've been following the conversation about that Netflix uh, production uh, that is... Uh, um, Burning bridges at the moment, as it seems. Let's hear your thoughts on any of this headline. Ify, what, what, what? I'm just looking at e-payments as well, yeah. and just the idea. I think, but there are two headlines that actually seem to me are uh, almost uh, by the, there's almost some sort of um, symbiosis in both of them with the IPPIS and the uh, e-payments. Mm -hmm. It's just showing you that there is a common thread that runs between the both in that that digitalization is the way forward, it's the future, and that even though the uh, IPPIS is trying to uh, delay this future, it's inevitable. And, 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 that, and the, the banks earning that amount through e-payment shows that there's no other way but going through digitalization for Nigeria in terms of making sure we have economic growth. All right, let, I think we should move on quickly because, or oh, you want to speak on one headline? Yes, I would like to speak on the varsity, um, the IPPIS Space situation strike, in terms yeah. of, yes, there's been a growing back and forth tussle between the, IP, um, the ASU and the government and in regards to payment of the of workers. But in the midst of all of this, it's the students that suffer the most because we know it's almost general knowledge that you can have like a four year curse and end up finishing that in six, seven years because of these situations are um, always, it's been an ongoing case where they go for strike and this and that. But like the, the government needs to, and the government and both us, we need to come together and understand that we are working to educate the future, which Not are children, people. Yeah. which are the students. And they need to take top priority, not necessarily the payment. Yes, you need to pay for your work, but you also need to understand. Consider the children yeah, and, so and the students. Th these things need to be done quickly and not so rash and brash. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'm told we have less than two minutes, so we'll <laughs> just do a quick run through of the Nation newspaper. APC launches a battle to end crisis in Edu own to others. Uh, we also have Senator Dyes, that's. Um, um, Wajimogu there, Lawan, others, Mon, Supreme Court okays uh, election of some um, governors. Uh, we also have Julius Berger, 38 others, bid for Fox Mainland Bridge job. Oyo Oshun customers seize 2,540 bags of rice. Um, I, want, I want just um, quick thoughts. Um, Ify, APC launches battle to end crisis in Edu Ondo. I think that story was also captured in a different way in this day newspaper, but I want to hear thoughts now for a round up. Uh, I, I mean, I've just I've, I've, I've made it very clear in terms of uh, how I feel. I just feel like all the issues that we're having are systemic uh, of our economic uh, issues. 
And I feel like once those issues are addressed economically, that a lot of these issues that we're having in terms of uh, fracture, fractures and, uh, on civil, and civil unrest and people taking things into their own hands will be sorted out once that is taken care of. I want to thank you too very much for coming and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you, Pastor. All right, thank you too for watching. And that's a wrap for Newspaper Review this fine morning. We'll be back again tomorrow for the last episode of For the Week. Do take care and enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Felicity Ezeweke.